third time's a charm with Dylan Gosein. Okay, so the conversation went on for a long time, and that's why I've done three podcasts with him. I'm Tim Byrne. This is Tim Byrne, Almost Live. Thank you for joining me tonight on Wednesday. All right, Dylan and I talked about education. Actually, Alex Byrne, my niece, Kevin the Goat's daughter. So Alex is Kevin Byrne's daughter. Kevin Byrne owns Copo, just so you understand the relationship. I just call her my daughter because I don't want to confuse you folks at home. Okay, so we talked about education and how uh, everybody with a BA that uh, applies. A BA is like a new high school diploma. I'm a high school dropout, by the way. Uh, 15 years of age, 11 months old. About three, four weeks before my birthday, I told my mom I wanted to quit. She stared at me and I said, I promise you, mom, I won't be poor. By the time I'm 35, I'll be rich. Okay, well, it hasn't quite happened, but I'm not poor, and I'm not rich. I got an ex-wife, rapes and pillages me all the time. Okay, Dylan and I talk about education, uh, about success, failures. Alex is garbling in the background, so you can't hear her very well, but don't worry, I'll be on the backside and explain more. Take care. young, it's put into kids' mind that school is the only way, when it really isn't. Isn't that They're right, Alex? With a, What do you have, like a double master's, triple PhD in underwater basket weaving in Lithuania <laughs> or something? That cost you 75, and se- like 75 grand, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, $75,000 Lithuanian underwater basket weaving, master's. People, people can create their own opportunity. You don't need to be going through and dying. Whatever, whatever it may be, high school, college, university. Well, you did university, though. Yeah, I did. You finished too, right? Yeah. Completely? Yeah. Did it benefit you? My life experiences, I find, are far more beneficial than anything I learned But do you think in you'd school. be where you are now if you didn't do that? I do. You think that you would still be where you are? I do. I can't say, I can't say, obviously, I'd be... Alex, you'd be exactly where you are right, you would be exactly where you are right now, <laughs> whether you spend $75,000 on Lithuanian or not. Like, I'm not talking about specific, like necessarily exactly where I am. I mean, family business, obviously. Right. But I mean, like. Hello, Kevin. <laughs> I don't think I'd be the same. Sorry, am I yelling? Nope. Um, I don't think I'd be the same person I am if I didn't go to school first. I think that I would be a much, much different person if I didn't experience school. I think. So I definitely don't regret it, even though you like to make fun of me. And yes, it was a lot of money. And yeah, I could have probably gotten those experiences in a different way, but I don't regret what I did. Oh. Uh, Sorry, I, um, the only regret that I ever have of uh, things like what you did is the money, not the experience. Yeah. Yeah, when, you dro- when you drop, it's ridiculous the amount. If I was to drop 70, today as a businessman at 52 years of age, if I was to say, I'm going to drop $75,000 down here, I'm not going to get fuck all for it. What do you think, CFO? Good investment? Right. It's my CFO go, <gasps> <gasps> what? No, you're not putting $75,000 down to do absolutely nothing. Yeah. It's, it, so to get a life experience, the value in that for me, looking back, I go. Right. Yeah, but hindsight's twenty twenty. I mean, you could have went to you could have went to U of T for free. Okay, but when I went to school, and you did, and you quit, and you you quit U of T several times. If I had come here and not gone to school, I would have always wondered what would have happened if I went and done what I wanted and, to do. And you see, and that's the thing. Like I think that the experience in in college and university. Um, I'm saying more so on a social level, the people that you meet. I don't think it helps you with a job anymore. It, they say it, it's a new high school. Well, but they talk about it nowadays. It's I don't not, look at anybody's res- I don't look at anybody's education anymore. I've not, looked at education in ten yeah, years. Everyone fluffs it up and makes themselves seem like they're Superman. Well, and, and you get. By the way, when you Business get when you get the B, the B A in political science or the B A in Lithuanian, yeah. or some B A in mar- media, social, market, whatever the, and you go, who cares? But you see, everything is different too, right? I mean. You, if you're studying to work in a hospital and you're pr- planning on doing okay. major okay, surgeries but, and everything, there's obviously certain process you need to follow in order to accomplish that. And uh, But my, my sister-in-law, who's a doctor, mm-hmm. will tell you that she had better life experiences going to every hospital, working internships well, placement, than, right. than she ever right. did in the classroom setting. Which which I don't disagree with at all. I I think personally that that's what on a needs prof- to be implemented but on a, more. So, so take, take away... 
uh, professions that require a lot of Latin and, yep. and memorization, right. doctors, lawyers, yep. pharmacists. Yep. Because I, I, I think uh, what you need to, before I'm willing to let somebody cope with my chest, I really want to make sure they're dedicated to it. Yeah. So I want to torture the shit out of them for seven years. Right. <laughs> I want to torture the crap out of you, Jenny, my yeah. sister-in-law, for seven years yeah. before I let you cut out my chest because it means you're really committed. Al, Al, if I let you cut out my chest in that first year you started and you walked out and quit halfway through the surgery, that would be really a drag. So at least the seven years of school puts you in a mind frame that I am fucking committed to doing this. And I, I don't believe that school's bad. I just think that people need to be a bit more um, critical on what and why and how. And the paths they take. I agree. And, and agree. you said it two seconds ago, not be snuck because society says <laughs> I need a BA. Yeah. Okay. How about society says you do what's right for you, it's, not what's right for your mom and dad, not what's right because of your school, not what's right because of what your friends did. Do what's right for you. My uh, well, 17-year-old Georgie is not going to university. And she right. said to me in the car the other day that she's being shunned by her friends because... Because uh, she's not going. She's going to Aurora. She goes to uh, school in Aurora. It's pretty snooty. Yep. Aurora's a rich town. Yep. And all her friends are like, uh, the question isn't whether you're going to university or not. Right. When they were, they've graduated now. It's which, which university, university are you going to? And, they, and so she'd be said, which university are you going to? And, and she'd go, I'm not. And they go, what do you mean you're not? Right. And then, are your parents forcing you? And, and I don't, by the way, whether so, she goes or not, it's irrelevant to me. Right. Here's what's relevant to me for, every, for you two young people and any other young person. You need to have a destination. Have you, whether it's to be rich, CFO, chief marketing manager, work for Royal Bank, whatever your destination, you need to have a destination. How, what journey you take to get there, I don't give a shit. You see that. But have a destination. I think, I think. And if you don't have a destination, then you have a problem. It's, it's a double-sided sword because I find that sometimes people get too focused on where they're going and don't, don't focus as much on how they're going to get there. The journey. Yeah. Yeah, you but really I, gotta, I think I think you really got to think things out and put things in place to make sure that you know you get there and get there well, you know. Right, but whether whether it takes me five uh, five days to drive to Florida, or whether it takes me one, whether I decide to dodge off and go to Maine or Halifax first, and then go to New York City, then drive over to Pennsylvania, then down to down to South Carolina, right. then I don't think it matters where I go. Oh, excuse me. I, I don't think you as a young person should, as long as you know you're gonna. When I was 15 and I said to my mom I wanted to quit, I can remember sitting around at this little round kitchen table. Right. And I said, Mom, I'm, I'm going to, it was two weeks before my 16th birthday. I'd be working mm -hmm. for the old man. Was, I, my mother would drive me to school every morning because I would never catch the bus. Love that. She just, she'd get up and throw me in the car and say, You need to go. You need right. to go. Right. And two weeks before my 16th birthday, I said, Mom, I'm gonna, I want to quit school. I told my mom, I didn't tell my dad. And my siblings are all, they're obviously the youngest. And, you know, my oldest brother is seven years older. My yep. sister's six years older. My other brother's four years older. They're all either graduated, gone to university, screwed off to the army. They were gone. Yeah. I'm 15. My brother's 23, 22. Yeah. Do you yep. get it? Yep. I said, I'm going to quit. And she looks at me and goes, and with smoke in her mouth, <sighs> grabs her tea, sips it, and we stare at each other. And all I said to her is, Mom, I, I promise you I, I'll be rich when I'm 35. And she looked at me and went, you can quit. And and because and I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to work. I'm not going to work at the time Becker's, uh, 7-Eleven, yep. you know, yep. uh, <laughs> Max Milk yep. at the time was Becker's. <clears throat> I'm not going to work for Becker's for the rest of my life. Right. You know, I promise you I'll be rich. I, me I remember saying, inside, like with her silence, blowing smoke across the table, <laughs> I promise you I'll be rich around 35. Jeez. And she went. Wh okay, which, you can go. Which I think is a wonderful segue to to something else I want to ask. Um, you doing what you do now? Do you think that you got here through the love of the actual physical putting in glass and the jobs, or was it something where you wanted to follow your dad's footsteps? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, Not often that you stump Tim. <laughs> Ba bam! What, Welcome what, to Dylan it, Go it, Sign Almost Live. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 15 years old, I wanted to work for my dad. Period. Right. right. I want. Uh, um, that's all I want. I want to work under my dad. I want to be with my dad. And even for all the days that my dad yelled and screamed at me, hated me, and fired me on a daily basis or a weekly basis, and told me to get the fuck out of the shop. <laughs> um, and I would. And by by virtue of that, you would just be literally. He'd look at you. Get the fuck out of my shop now! And and you'd be like. Okay. okay, and <laughs> you do the Muppet walk, yeah, and yeah. you fuck off. But you'd be back at the shop at 
at uh, 7 a.m. next morning with a coffee course, in your hand. Of course. You never took your key away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You click, click, open the door, flick on the lights, and you just start. And, and he, 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 I'd always get there 10, 15 minutes before him. Right. And he would pull in after me. And he'd come to the shop, and I'd be down the back working because it was a big place. It was a 25,000-square-foot yep. building, and I was way down the back. Yep. And he'd do one of these <laughs> and walk away, and we never talk for a day or two. Right. And then it would just be back to normal. But I'd get fired every two, three days, yep. four days, yep. all the time. But I always, wa- I, I always wanted to work. Number one thing when I was a kid was to work f- with my dad. Right. Uh, where, where I am now, um, I think and it's on a very sexist thing, and I don't... I'm going to say a very sexy thing. I think men like to build shit. I think men want Tonka toys. Girls want yep. Barbies. Yep. Oh, and I know it's okay for boys to have Barbies. Yeah. I don't need a bunch of tweets telling me otherwise. But I, I think, generally speaking, boys like to build. Yep. So uh, the glass business was just, you know, whether it be bricks and mortar or whether it be uh, drywall or carpet, I was, unlike carpet or unlike drywall, mm-hmm. we were actually building something that was... It, it was um, like growing a plant out of the ground, like you actually see it yeah, come you see out, right? Things evolve, yeah. Right. Um, right. So I like. I mean, I think everybody likes building. I think as a boy, you like being in the, in the sandbox with Tonka toys yep. and your dinky toys, and you're building shit, and you got your Lego and all your crap. Yeah, so I mean, um, I think I think like building things is innate to a, a boy or a man. Right. Um, then working with my dad, but listen, when I was when I was twenty, my dad told me I would never own the company. <laughs> so I worked for my dad from age thirteen. Right. I only had one other job, and that's with Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken part time. Okay, love me some KFC. I, a, I love KFC. Fried chicken in general is incredible. I love. Sorry, I love KFC. No, nah. I'm. A, I, if I had to choose, I'm a Popeyes kind of guy. But hey, all right, only because of my history. So my great grandfather, mm-hmm. um, after the war, came to came to Canada, and I knew my great grandfather really, really well because he lived until I was uh, 18, 19. Right, right. He was the vice president of general manager, vice president. A, a company called Bowls Lunch, and we're going to run out of time, and that's okay. We're going to end it soon. Yeah, we're at an hour now. Okay, well, but no. there's a bunch of you walking around, letting that was like let, literally 20 seconds. No, nah, she let Tinker <laughs> she let Tinkerbell sniff her crotch and stuff. It was really weird. So we'll cut all that shit Never out. Happened. So he was the president of Bowls Lunch, which was a uh, a catering company downtown that was like for uh, old army people to come in and buy two dollar lunches. Okay. Okay. Bowls Lunch was purchased by Scott's Chicken Villa. Which owned which then, Kentucky yeah. Fried Chicken. He became the first president of Kentucky Fried Chicken of Canada, quickly, quickly to train uh, a guy named John Shepard to become the president. Wow. John Shepard stayed in touch with my grandmother until she passed away. My my great grandmother and sent her flowers at Easter, and because he was really happy that uh, Walter, my grandfather, mm-hmm. had spent so much time mentoring him to become yeah. president of KFC. Yeah. So when I so when KFC opened up in Stovall at the time, and I and I was absolute. At this time, I'd been working for my dad for a year. Right. And I absolutely wanted to tell him to fuck off. Right, right. So I went and got a job at KFC. And all I, had, all I wrote was John Shepard, because I was allowed to write John Shepard the president as my, as my uh, <laughs> as, reference, as, my, as, as one of the references. <laughs> and I, did, I literally oh, hand, I handed it to a guy, and I can't remember his name, but he's kind of <laughs> the manager. <laughs> you feel like what he's more you spleen? When you're done, come back to my office. You know, one of those guys. <laughs> So I come back to his, I come back and I hand him my thing and I stand there and I'm, and I'm 14 years old and he looks at me and he goes, "Do you really know him? You can start on Tuesday." And that was it. Seriously, that's how he gave you the job. Yeah, love that. I only worked part time. I kept working for the old man. Right, right. Because it turned. I really wanted to quit after about three weeks. But it was the best place to party. Yeah. So I was 14 years old, hanging out with a bunch of 16, wow. 17, 8 year old, best and, place and to we party. would finish KFC. at one o'clock in the morning, smoke dope, drink booze, Are you eat serious? chicken. That's what the time that the KFC closed at yeah. 1 a.m. 1 a.m. We were still. We're the only thing is told. There was no McDonald's, no Burger King. <laughs> there was no fuck all. There was nothing. Everybody's just eating. It was KFC. Judy's Pizzeria and KFC, <laughs> and we traded pizza for chicken. All the time. Are you serious? All the How time. How close were you guys? Were you guys right across the street from each other? <laughs> okay, this conversation's gone way off track. Sorry, and the best sorry. part of this is that we had a cooker that made gravy, a big pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would fill it full of water and cook hot dogs, <laughs> put them in buns, and serve hot dogs and fries to Cable Tech. Johnson Johnson had a company. Johnson Johnson was across the street with Cable Tech right. in Stovall. They would come after their shift work at 12 midnight. Oh, my God. And we would sell them hot dogs and fries out of the KFC for cash. Okay, that makes me sound like a criminal. Boys and girls don't ever do that. Yeah, that, that's terrible. But we would sell it for cash because we didn't want to cook the chicken. The reason we didn't want to cook the chicken is because if we used the, 
deep fryers, we'd have cleaned the fucking things. Right, right. And they were all coming in at midnight. Right. Nobody but wants it, to be cleaning that but up. But we didn't also want, we didn't want to complain. We've got to call it, we're done? We have two minutes left. We have two minutes left, Dylan. Two minutes. All right, this is the journey of Timber, and we okay, just started. Two. I am 15 years old working for Terry Fried Chicken and my dad and just quit high school. Two minute drill. Um, quick questions then. Um, craziest install that you've done? Uh, most glorious or crazy? Okay, let's. Okay, let's. Glorious is CN Tower, glor- right? Gl- glorious, right. okay. Hardest install that you did, like, terrible job. Not a terrible job, but. The scariest, to do. The scariest thing I ever did was remove a piece of glass from my father at 18 King, 18 King Street before I got renovated in the back of the building. There was a piece of glass that stood about 180 inches tall, three, three eighths glass. Yep. And we had to take it out by hand. So it was 180 inches. By hand. 180 inches tall by, by 10 feet wide. And I can remember getting, and every, to be a man on a job site, you had to get to the bottom. Put a suction cup on the bottom, and all that glass would be towered over top of you, and it was cracked and broken, and we we're going to have to lift it out of the hole. Oh, and the only way we could lift it out was over top of our heads. Oh, my Leaf God. Leaf Jensen per, um, uh, per, Leaf Jensen per Elmer, all these old guys are probably all dead now. Yeah, yeah. Leaf still works for InCan. And he's 80, and he looks like he's 65. Nice. But anyway, so I go to the bottom piece of glass, grab the suction cup, and I'm like, I got my spot. By the way, you got to be a man to be at the bottom. You know why? Well, only the guys at the bottom die. I know guys have lost both their arms right here. Stand at the bottom there. Right. Okay. So I go to get down there, and Ray's like, get to the top. And I'm like, what the fuck? And he goes, get to the fucking top of the scaffolding. I'm like, what the fuck? And he goes, get to the top now. And I didn't know this, right? Like, I, like right. I'm a big so, boy. I'm so a big strapping guy point, fucking you, down the bottom. At that point, you didn't even know that. So I didn't you know I was going to die. Like, but the big guys go to the oh, bottom. I you, you were just uh, being the courageous young fucking, guy. Yeah, no, I was dumb. I didn't know he was going to die. I get to the top. Ray, Ray literally get, uh, get, stands back to, uh, 20 feet away and goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even touching the glass. There's like 10 guys on it. And he's standing like fucking miles away, right? He's like, <laughs> he's got smoke in his mouth. He's like, okay, so if it breaks, hold on to your peace. And every, and I can remember Elmer and all the guys, because every, every, we're looking up and down scaffolding, right? You're like, like this, everybody goes. Like, yeah. And this piece of glass had to come over our heads. Wow. To get it out of the hole. And I can remember being, and even at the top, and I only had 25% over my head. Right. In comparison to the fucking guys, the two layers down. Right. So it was tiered scaffolding, and it went, Whoop! And then we lopped it off to the side. They moved to safe, and we put it back in, a new piece. Okay, it was the most terrifying thing I ever did wow. in my life. Cause, and I, I guess what made it terrifying is that I caught on at that moment how dangerous, get it, the light bulb, bunk. Yeah. I was yeah. like, wow, fuck, eight people die in this shit, yeah. eh? Yeah. Uh, remember Gord Pooter? You don't remember, you don't remember, you remember Cord? C-O-R-D, Cord Pooter? No. Okay, hold this. <laughs> Cord's dad lost both his arms oh, to one of those big plates. What are we doing now? We can, we can say goodbye. Which one? It's gone. <laughs> only got this one left. All right. We can say goodbye. Huh? Don't worry about it. We can say goodbye. No, we've got six seconds left on this one. So goodbye. <laughs> you have six seconds. Extend the goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> That's it, man. That's it. All right. Say goodbye. All right, we'll catch up on this story another Wednesday in a few weeks. You know, Dylan, I really want to appreciate you coming on. I really Thank love, you. I really love you, you being with State. It's been three years now, right? Yep, yep. This is Tim Burns. Tim Burns almost live Wednesday night drive home. I'll see you next week. Okay. All right, so uh, you just finished another podcast with Dylan, and I am now don't want to see Dylan anymore. For all you folks that spent sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars on your secondary university education and told me, well, but I had to get all those experiences, go do it with your own money. Don't do it with your parents. If you don't know what you're using your education for, don't bother blowing the cash. I don't care what your parents say. Take the money, go buy a house. Go travel the world, work on little shitty jobs before you go to university. University is not for everybody, and that's okay. I'm a high school dropout. I did okay. So I am Tim Byrne. This is Tim Byrne Almost Live. Don't spend your parents' money on education if you don't need it. Take the 80 grand and go buy a house. Or just don't take the 80 grand and go flop around Australia and New Zealand and do what you need to do. Oh, sparkly bells. Find me on LinkedIn, YouTube. Remember, you got to stick your head above that foxhole if you're going to become a hero. Stop being so scared. Take a chance.